What's up, everybody? It's Jack and Dan. And today, we're going to work on the man cave. Yeah, sir. Good, good old Wade Wilson up here, right? A.K.A. Deadpool. Deadpool. <laughs> and uh, he's doing really well. The Pothos is doing really well. His tank's doing awesome. The Pothos is coming down. Yeah. We got the princess tank down here. They're doing really awesome. Everything's going great. Look at them. Hey, what's up, ladies? And uh, ultimately, when we are getting ready to breed... If we breed Wade with one of these young ladies, wanted to make him kind of like a man cave. Yeah. And that was our plan. Because ultimately, sometimes the male betas, there they might uh, not be so super hot yeah. to the babies. They can be kind of rude. So if something happens like that, or if we're concerned about that, we want to be able to put him in to another tank. You can There's, isolate him, yes. Yeah, so we got some cool stuff. We're going to show you what we're going to do here. All right, this is a little light strip, little LED light strip that we had kind of taped um, over the top here of this glass shelf to shine down into the princess tank, which it did so very wonderfully. However, uh, we're going to have to reposition it a little bit. And so we untaped it. We're going to get that moved so it fits underneath. It's going to actually go underneath the other tank and shoot down on there. And then we have another one of those that's going to go up on this shelf and face down. Now this is what this light actually looked like, right kiddo? Yes. This was a nasty old LED light, wasn't it? Yes, it was. What we did is we just took it apart, right? Yes. We're gonna do the same thing to that one. We took it apart. Number one, it was a lot brighter that way. And number two, it was very thin. It could fit right underneath that tank. So that's gonna happen to that one. And then this one's gonna get taped up here. So let's get to work on that first. All right, these are tiny little cheap LED lights that I got forever ago. I think they were only a few bucks on a clearance rack at Mark's. Uh, you can see I had them hanging over another light. They had some algae and stuff growing. That's obviously not going to happen because we're going to have them, you know, underneath the tank. Anyway, a couple of Phillips screws. Jack went to get the Phillips screwdriver. He's going to be taking those off. And this is going to be uh, the light that's on the timer. Now, in the meantime... We did get this for the princess tank just because we saw it and thought it was really cute. It was on a clearance rack for like 99 cents at one of the pet stores we passed by uh, in the mall. So that's going to be going in the princess tank. This is going to be going into Wade's tank. This is a really awesome crystal. And, you know, we have these under gravel lights. And it came with this nice little base. And it actually kind of floats in this. Um, but these things are normally... I mean, anywhere from 10 to 30 bucks, we've seen crystal things like this. But we were at a garage sale, and look at this. Got it for a buck. But we are thinking that in Wade's tank here, we have this little tiny hurricane type of deal. If this fits, we might just put it right inside. So we're going to try to do that real quick. If it doesn't sink too low, we're going to leave it there. Now, of course, we have our, uh, our signs in here. This is, of course, Aquarius for Jack. And then I got the Sagittarius ones. These do light up from the bottom. We're going to turn those on and off so you can see. Isn't that cool? And those were about 20 bucks on Amazon we got those. This little hurricane we got for like a quarter at a clearance aisle. That's got a colored light in it, and that's really cool. But we're going to see if this guy will fit on top. Now, the only bad part about it is, is that if we put that on, the snails won't be able to go in there and clean. All we'll have to do, though, is about, oh, every two or three weeks, pop that out. And for a day or so, clean it off, and then they'll go in there and clean that out, and then we put it back on. So that'll probably work pretty good, huh? Yes. So you want to try to reach in there and put it in, or you want me to do it? I'll, I'll try to do it. All right. So let me focus. All right, Jack's going to try to do it here. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, just go real slow. Don't drop it, because it'll break. I'm going to take it all the way down to that and just set it down real gently. I'm going to hold your arm so you don't fall. Now see if it'll fit and stop in there. I feel like it, or do you think it'll I don't, go all the I way through? Go, it's going to go all the way through. Think it's going to go all the way through? Yeah. Oh, bummer. All right, so the globe is actually too small. It'll go all the way down into that. But since that hurricane's holding that water out of the way, we put the base down there. You can see the base is right on top of that color-changing LED. We're going to put the globe, we're going to take the hurricane out and then put the globe on top of that little base. And it still should light up, so let's see how that works. I'm just going to grab this out, but Jack is going to put the globe in. So by taking this out, that sand's going to kind of see how it filled in there. So let's take that out. Here, take this, buddy. Set it in the sink or something there. 
All right, now, if you look down there, see how that light is still coming through? So I'm just gonna kind of push this sand around a little bit. Sorry, that snow got a little bit. Here, I'll put you up there, buddy. There you go. <laughs> so we're just gonna kind of push that sand around that, and it'll be just like the other ones. And then that light's gonna shine right up through that guy. And Jack is gonna put that globe right on top. Let me just make sure it's centered. Yep, looks pretty good. It's kind of like uh, Indiana Jones. Like, yeah, Indiana Jones. <laughs> just don't drop it, man. Go don't down all the way. Snail. Nah, he's fine. Just go down all the way and set it down. Maybe give a little tuft with one of your fingers, get some of that stuff out of there. Off the top of it, yeah, like that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, perfect, set it down in there. You gonna put Antarctica down? Yeah. I think it's gonna twirl around anyway, pretty much. Yeah. Oh yeah, it looks like that light's gonna come right up Mission through it, Mission Impossible. Dude. Pretty cool. Oh, look at that. Yeah, there's America right there, look at that. <laughs> cool, man, that looks great. We'll definitely uh, check it out at night. All right, that's done. First little project. All right, there it is, totally cool. Like we just turned the lights off, the snail's already crawling on it. Yeah. I guess he doesn't weigh enough to spin it. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's funny, he's cleaning it. So that light comes up through the podium and then up through the globe and it kind of disperses it. Isn't that neat? Wow, like shoots it up on the oh, ceiling that's like, so cool. oh, that's cool. Uh, it's like a little blast where the uh, bamboo is there. Yeah. That's super neat. Can you believe we got that thing for a buck at a garage sale? Look at him. He's like cruising around. He's like a big, huge monster oh, the, alien you snail. Look at that little dot right there. It's kind of like the orb. That little red piece, it's kind of resembling the orb. Ah, it's crazy. So the colors are changing and going through there. Uh, that came out great. I love it. That's like, a night, that's like the, one of those little uh, night night sky things in your uh, room. Yeah, it's almost brighter than it was going through the hurricane because it like blasts the light through the bulb there. Yeah. It's almost like it turned the globe into a bulb. All right, so there's the side one. So there's all three of them. That's magnificent. Wow, look at that. Came out awesome. All right, well, there you go. There's the first step here on the shelf. Wow, I'm so impressed. This guy's loving this already. He's like, I'm cleaning this off right away, man. How you like it, Wade? Wade's like, it's cool. I dig it. How neat is that? Isn't it amazing what kind of creative ideas you can come up with just with a cheap little dollar LED light and a dollar crystal from a garage sale? I mean, how cool is that, dude? It's, it projects very nicely. Super neat. He's all about it. He's like totally going around, cleaning the whole thing. All right, Jack's unscrewing the light here so we can get to the guts of it. And then he's gonna put that little beach lamp in. This is the old hurricane that we took out. We got it for, I think, 25 cents or 50 cents. What was that uh, world market that was going out of business? Yes, or sir. closing? And we got a whole bunch of these, but they're really good for that, for keeping sand out of the way. So if you're going to place something like that, you could use this as a placer or you could just use it as the light itself. You can see they kept this thing relatively clean. We never cleaned this ever. And it had been in there for, oh, I don't know, maybe a year or so. And they kept it relatively clean just down where it was by the sand, got some algae. But this dude's like, I'm getting this one all cleaned up for you. So nice job, dude. Just take out a few of these screws. Now, obviously, you wouldn't want to handle this while it was plugged in, because you can get shocked, because I've gotten shocked before. Yes. I mean, it's not bad, but it will shock you a little bit. Yes. Um, but by doing that, you actually make this light a lot more bright. See these little things that fall out of here? Isn't they the, actually take away a lot of the brightness. Isn't the opticals, but yes, they do take away the brightness. So this will be sitting directly on the glass above the tank, and we'll put tape over the top to protect it. We'll use, of course, the good old Gorilla Tape. All right, let's get this little beach sign in in the uh, princess tank here. All right, there's a lot of reflection in here because we're working, but we, uh, we came in here a little earlier today. We trimmed all these roots because they were growing all through here, so we trimmed a lot of those roots and pulled them out. And these little tidbits that kind of fall in the uh, 
Pleco will actually end up just eating those. So there's the little bridge is doing awesome. So Jack's gonna go ahead and put the little beach sign in there. Yes, this is like basically the beach over here, I guess. So I'm just gonna, <laughs> there's an arrow pointing to it, so I'm just gonna go. Yeah, just kind of reach through it. There's a little gap there. Watch but out, it's... guys. <laughs> They're all excited. Like, look at our new sign. They're like, we heard uh, there's a new guy up there named Wade Wilson. Can't wait to meet him. Deadpool is kind of a ladies' man, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> Look at these guys, how that's good they're good. doing. I mean, that's kind of awesome. It kind of blocks the uh, bridge a little bit, gives them a little more privacy if they go in there. That's pretty perfect, dude. There you go. Yeah, look how these guys are doing. All four of them doing really, really, really well. Really nice. This tank's doing phenomenal. Gonna probably top it off a little bit. It's evaporating a little bit, but uh, yeah, super cool. Like I said, a lot of reflection because because uh, we got all the lights because we're working over here. But uh, look at this one. This is the one that we named Carol Danvers after Captain Marvel. She's checking the sign out right away. She's like, what's going on here? Super cool. She digs it. She looks phenomenal. We're thinking she's kind of the toughest, biggest one. So we're thinking about breeding her first, trying her first. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so this pothos is coming down around the back. This one here is going to ultimately go on this shelf. For right now, we're just going to keep Cap's picture on this. We do have a variety of small tanks that we have gotten that were thrown away or that people gave to us and stuff. One of them will ultimately end up here. We're not sure exactly how we're going to do it, but this one is kind of ready to go for that tank when it does. This one that's coming down around the back here is gonna just make it into um, this new kind of man cave tank. But if it doesn't, that's okay, because we do have some little remnants of ones that we're gonna throw in. See these two floating guys right here? Those are just little pieces that broke off inside a Wade's tank. Sometimes that happens and we're just gonna throw them in there and they'll actually take off and grow. Okay, ultimately the one we decided to use for the man cave was this little five gallon. This was just a little five gallon rectangular tank that's gonna fit nicely on this shelf. It's gonna be totally big enough for him. And uh, basically just somebody threw it away. One of our neighbors, they said, hey, if you want it, take it. It did come with some other things. We're not gonna use most of those things. There is a decent little heater. We do not really need a heater back here, especially for you know beta um, because this is the south facing room, gets a ton of sun and everything like that. So it's not really gonna be an issue. Um, we may end up putting these Celestial Pearl Danios in here from the puffer tank. If we do, we will probably put a heater in it when the fall hits, but for now, not super concerned about it. We are going to be putting in a background. This was a tiny little background we, we found. Maybe do this little cave background. Get it? Cave for the man cave. Isn't that cool? And, uh, we do have a big bag of aquarium gravel just kind of left over because we were using it in the uh, top of the one rain barrel, which we'll be doing an update on soon. We are actually going to be manufacturing our own under gravel filter for this little five gallon tank. We have some of these left from an, another under gravel filter that we did. And this is just a, just a piece of tube that we had left over. And this actually is part of what our aqua clear filters. This is the fitting that holds it into the top. We don't use this though. We don't need it because it's just like an extra piece that is not necessary. The inlet goes right in there without this and it actually works really good and it's kind of less of a headache to clean. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of saw this end off and then this is going to slide right in between these two little holders and this is going to be the stack to the under gravel filter. Now, we thought it would be really cool to do a castle type of thing, didn't we, kiddo? Yes. Uh, for, um, you know, Wade. But we didn't really do a castle. We saw this, didn't we? Yes. It kind of looks like a smurf house, but kind of like a tree house together. <laughs> well, it was kind of on the clearance rack. Sometimes these things can be $15, $25 or something. But we thought it was really cool. It was on the clearance rack for like 10 bucks. And we just thought it was very unique and very cool. 
it's a little big, but we're not gonna have a lot of other things in here. What we decided we were gonna do is put a hole in the top of this, just like we did for the princess castle. And it is gonna sit over top of this under gravel stack. And ultimately that air is gonna come up through. We're gonna drill some holes. The air is gonna come up through this and it's gonna be a little miniature under gravel filter where the air tube goes in the top and then the air comes out. So that's the plan. That's what we're gonna do. Let's get to work on this. All right, so easy enough. Honestly, backgrounds, there's a lot of different ways to put them on. Really, we've never really done a video on it because if you just read the directions, it's really not that hard. Some people use tape, some people use water, some people use background adhesives. You could do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, these little tanks are very easy to do it with. And Jack thought this was pretty cool because since we're making a man cave, it's a cave. It is a coral, but we cut the coral stuff out because it was too big, so you can't even see it. So you really just look like you're in a cave with the sun coming out. Pretty awesome. I like it. Now what we need to do is just cut a little groove. And we've talked about this before. You can cut grooves into the frame here because the glass doesn't really come up to this. And we'll show you when we cut into this. The reason that we have to cut into that and make a little niche is because this little light for the light for the tank below it is going to be underneath it. And so we have to cut a niche in it so that this cord can sit and not be compressed. It does not have to be a big niche. It's just gonna be a tiny little niche. And we're just gonna cut that in there with a the good old steak knife. Very easy to do. You're just making a tiny little niche in this. You just kind of cut, kind of show you like you cut this way with it and then this way with it, with like a kitchen knife or whatever. We got lots of old knives, but anyway, you take that little bit of plastic out. You can see, looking in here, there is no glass anywhere near this. This part of the tank, this frame part that sticks up is normally hollow. So you're, we've done this on nearly every tank we've ever had. This is how we run under gravel lights and all that. So you do a little niche and you're gonna run that cord right underneath that. Okay, so the princess tank is nice and lit up with that light being underneath that tank. And obviously you're not gonna see that because there's gonna be substrate in there, gravel or whatever but that shines right up through there. This light, of course, is lighting up the, what's gonna be the new man cave. And we basically just cover that with a nice black piece of Gorilla Tape. And Cap's picture's gonna be there with the vines coming down. Of course, those vines are gonna keep filling in and coming down. This will ultimately be another tank, but now what we're gonna do is get the under gravel filter in here, get the gravel in, get that going. All right, so we took this big old Ginsu serrated knife, right? And we cut the bottom piece of that off, just like that, didn't we? Now it's nice and flat and flush. We got this old piece of tubing on it. All right, so show them how it slides right into the grate here now. This was just something we just kind of came across and said, hey, this is gonna work. So it actually slides in there exactly like the piece that goes with it. These were extra grates that we had left over, so we didn't have the piston-like piece to the top. So we just made one out of some old scraps. So it was really easy. You can see as you look down there, it goes right to that grate. Now what we'll do is we'll put an air tube down there. This guy is actually gonna sit right on top, like that. And we're gonna drill some holes in the top, and this will kind of conceal the pump and then this hole in the gravel filter will be underneath it. So we're gonna work on that next, but this got a little bit messed up here. So what we're gonna do is, since it's uh, kind of like the evening here, we're going to see this got a little crack in it. We're gonna kind of super glue this together a little bit, give it the night time to kind of cure, and then we'll kind of finish doing this tomorrow. All right, so it's the next morning. We got the grate down in here. This is all dry and everything. We had it like by a fan. And that's just like Gorilla Glue, super glue. Not incredibly neat, but it's gonna be covered up anyway. One of the things you wanna show you from a top view here, when you do put a grate of an under gravel filter in, make sure that it's not touching the silicone. You notice that we have a space all the way around there. If the edge of that is up on the silicone, it won't be flush with the bottom of the tank. And then some gravel can get up underneath and obviously, if gravel starts getting underneath your grate, 
your filter is not going to really have good flow because it's going to obstruct it. So always make sure that that's nice and flat. And what we're going to do is we're going to slide this guy in here. We may use the corner one. We may end up using the second one so the house will fit properly. And the house is going to sit on top and then the air tube is just going to run up. And what we have down here is this is just a tiny little pump. Got to remember, these are just very, very small sponge filters. This is just a tiny little pump, it's like a little $10 pump. Got a little check valve, got three outputs on it. One goes to the princess tank. One goes up there to Wade's tank, all the way to the top. And this one's going to go to this one. When we do end up adding a fourth tank, we'll have to add another valve. Just, just one I had sitting around. But yeah, this tiny little pump is more than enough to fuel three sponge filters for three little tanks like this. You can see that one's coming out really good and Wade's is the same way. And uh, they really just need to bubble a tiny little bit. So we're gonna stick that in the slots and get this house in here. Now this house is pretty cool. It does have a huge opening in the back, probably gonna be faced kind of like crooked like that, facing the tank. All we have to really do is make one hole for the um, air tube to go in and really one or two holes for the air to escape. Otherwise it'll kind of fill with air and it might kind of float which we don't really want to have happen. I doubt it would, but otherwise the air would have to come all the way down to the little door here before it comes out. All right, so we got our trusty works here. This resin stuff is always kind of amazing. You just think it's like plastic, but it's really hard stuff. It's actually pretty hard to drill through. We're just gonna drill a couple holes in this back window so you won't even really see, you know, you won't even really see it, but the air will be able to escape. And then we're gonna kind of drill a hole more on the top where the tube's gonna go in. And you can see those go right through there. We're gonna rinse this all off. We're gonna get this in the tank. Again, this stuff is really good stuff that they make these out of, it's resin. You wanna be careful not to crack it. Just drill slowly. Make sure it's not cold, cause it could crack. This was sitting in here, it was pretty warm. So you could always put it in warm water first or something of that nature. But yeah, most of these holes, you're not really gonna see or anything. Uh, you're just gonna kind of see the front and it's gonna kind of look like a little chimney smoke stack or something like that coming out the back. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in there. We're gonna have to feed that stone down into there first, and then just kind of set the uh, you know house down on top of it. Um, you can really make anything like this into a filter. You can do sponge filter. You can do under gravel filter. If it were up to us, pretty much every filter would be an under gravel filter. They're just so low maintenance. It's just that when we have sand or something like this, you kind of have to do the sponge filter which is why we did that with that. It is a little easier too, because you can just kind of lift that castle off and do it. With this, you, you'd have to lift it off to access the stone. The thing is, is you're hardly ever gonna have to lift it off. You're gonna hardly ever have to clean it or do anything because of the nature of the gravel filter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide that baby in there and then we're gonna get the gravel in here. And then this will just go on top and we'll run it right down and hook it up and get this guy running. All right, so we were actually able to just fit that house in by putting this in the corner here. You can see this guy's right there holding on real good. And Jack's gonna start putting in a gravel. What you wanna do when you're doing under gravel filter is put the gravel right on top of the filter first to weigh it down. Because that way it's not gonna move and you're not gonna have gravel go up underneath it and end up filling it in. So we're going to start pouring that in, get a few of those in there, and then put the house in, hook it up, start filling it with water. Now the nice part too is we've got sponge filter there and sponge filters here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we haven't cleaned those in quite some time. We're going to wash those guys out in here to add some of those awesome microorganisms, get this culture rocking right away. All right, Jack got the gravel in here. It's pretty cool. You can see the stack sticking out. This is kind of a foresty theme and the cave kind of matches it, kind of doesn't, but it's a man cave and that's the background Jack wanted and it looks cool. What we're gonna do now is we gotta get this guy in here. This is a little bit tight. So we're just gonna kind of, uh, we have to do it like right at the corner here. It just makes it if we turn it kind of upside down like that. So there you go. And then this guy is gonna sit, um, you know, we're gonna feed that stone in, but this is how it's gonna go. It's gonna sit right on there. And then those bubbles will come up. This is gonna go out the back. 
And we may put some rocks or some driftwood or some other things in here. And of course the plants and roots are gonna fill in. Um, but you can see there's still room in there for them to go in and go around that. So the little guys will go in there. Uh, if we do end up transferring Wade in here, he'll be able to go in there. So let's get this hooked up, filled up with water and everything. All right, so Jack decided that he wanted to put this guy in here. This is a really cool kind of like multi-leveled layered sandstone. This was the first rock I had in my first aquarium that I ever had. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I like the layers it has. It looks like a, it just looks like a canyon of some sort. So that's kind of neat because it has a lot of history to it. It's very old. It has worn away a little bit over the years because it's sandstone, but it's always made a good uh, aquarium rock. So we're going to put that in there. So this is really easy when you're trying to fill a small tank like this and you don't want to run the whole siphon just to do a couple things. This is a five gallon tank. This is a two gallon pitcher. So do this twice. It'll pretty much be done because of all the other stuff in here. This is uh, one of those old school gravel vacs. We actually, I think we garbage picked it when we garbage picked a tank one time and we just use it for kind of simple stuff like this. We do not vacuum our gravel. We never have. We've talked about that in multiple videos, especially with under gravel filters. We just let it ride. You can see that air is already coming up in there. And when this gets full, it'll be coming out the top. Okay, you can see the little chimney coming out the back there. Pretty cool. Working awesome. We are going to take this big old nasty sponge. We've been letting it brew for quite a while out of the princess tank. We're going to wring that out in here. And then we're also going to take the two from the top, get this culture rocking in here. Okay, so here we go. We've got the sponge filter out of the princess tank. We are cleaning it out in, this is the tiny little, okay, this is the tiny little filter that fits inside of that princess castle. And we are cleaning it out, getting all these wonderful microscopic organisms to spread into this one. They are gonna get sucked down through the gravel because of this filter and fill up that grate underneath here and this substrate and this gravel and grow a culture very quickly. So this is a wonderful way to do it. Now, if you didn't have any sponge filters and you only had another under gravel filter, you could actually gravel vac a little bit out into another tank. In this case, we could gravel vac out of that tank or out of this tank and just put them in, put that water into here with all that wonderful culture in it. All right, so the princess tank's already cleared back up here. And this guy's almost clear already here, looking pretty good. Got a nice big bubble flow coming out of there. Again, kind of looks like a chimney kind of deal. Got the potos reaching in the back. That'll start growing in and growing roots just like the other one. We did throw these two little pieces in here though. They'll kind of get started. There's another one over there. They'll kind of get started and then we'll do what we did to this one when they get real big. We'll just kind of magnet them to the top. All right, so this is actually about a week later um, and this is just rocking. Do a little close up here. It is doing awesome. Got that little kind of smokestack looking thing coming out the top there. The filter is crushing. We got another little tiny rock we put in the back that's kind of cool. Kind of took some of the pothos and just dug it in the back here. We'll see if it kind of takes roots. Those are some pieces that had roots on them. Obviously those are coming in a little bit, but that'll grow with this extra light here. That'll grow right into this tank. And we'll just use magnets to hold it up like we did for the princess tank down here. These guys are doing awesome. They're loving their little beach sign, aren't they, buddy? Yes. Great placement on that. I love how you put that. Look at them. These guys, these ladies are always about the camera. They're always like, what's up? <laughs> really cool. Little Nyrite snail is in here. Oh, look, she's right on top of the castle. There she is. They look like little dragons. Yeah, they do. The, uh, the beta? Yeah, all the babies look like Oh, yeah. Dead. They're just doing awesome. They're excited. They know they're going to get to meet Wade pretty soon. Look how great that tank's doing. Trim those guys up. Looks awesome. They're looking great. Little lake, little pond's looking good. Moss Bridge is looking good. The little uh, Pleco's over here. She likes to hang out on the side here. 
She kind of goes behind there and comes out at night, cleans off the little lake. Yeah, it's doing great. Wade's doing fantastic. Snails are loving this globe. They're always all around it. Look at these big old golden snails in here doing great. Totally cool. This guy waving his antenna. Looks so great. There's Wade. It looks like his body is becoming a little bit more white. Looks great though, he's doing good. He resembles Deadpool, he's kind of got, got an attitude. Yeah. He's also kind of nice. He's like, bring on the ladies, guys. <laughs> well, it won't be long, dude. Won't be long. Look at that, how that looks. Let me get it to focus as I walked away too quickly. Look how that looks at night, all beaming up on the ceiling like that. So cool. Turn the white one off so we can just see the colored one, dude. Yeah, just to show them. Yeah, look how that looks when you just got that colored one on. Shining through that globe prism. Isn't that neat? Kind of looks like a snake. Like those are two eyes. Yeah. Those are the fangs. So neat. And it's like a king cobra and that's the neck. I mean, it just, it just changes constantly as it changes. That is, that is such a cool effect. I love how that came out, don't you, man? Yes. That is so neat. Well, these lights are all going to turn off here. And uh, we'll all be going to bed. Next time you see this, probably in about a week or two, we're going to go ahead and put those CPDs in here. And we were talking about maybe a little dwarf frog or two. Wouldn't that be kind of fun? Yeah, we were thinking that looks, that would look pretty cool. This is going to be super neat. Well, hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell for future notifications mm -hmm. because you want to see how everything goes with this breeding process. And then, of course, going to be doing another tank right there. Yes. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.